in the forward of the book, Simon Sinek, your book was Optimism Press, so shout out to him to seeing the brilliance in it, writes that although the book is about you, it's really about the art of how you treat people, how to listen, how to be curious. And we all have defining moments in our life, but you had one involving a hot dog that led you to discover the importance of turning ordinary transactions into extraordinary experiences. Can you talk about that? Yes. So the morning after those awards on the flight home to New York, it was clear to me that I didn't actually understand what unreasonable hospitality meant, which I think is okay. I think far too often people spend so much time trying to articulate their goals that they never start pursuing them. I believe that if you feel enough of a connection to an idea, trust your gut enough to just start down the path and know that you'll understand it more. It will reveal itself to you along the way. And so over the course of the next year, my team and I just started to try to figure out what was unreasonable hospitality. What did that actually look like? How were we going to make our impact? And, and we did a bunch of stuff to start to get there, but it was about a year later that I found myself in the dining room on a busier than normal lunch service, helping the servers in a busier than normal like day. And I was clearing appetizers from a table of four foodies, people that were just in New York on vacation to go to restaurants. And we were their last meal. They were headed to the airport to go back home after lunch. And I overheard them talking and they were going on and on about all the great restaurants they'd been to, Michelin starred places like Le Bernardin, Danielle, Momofuku, Per Se. And now they're at 11 Madison Park, but then one person jumped in and said, yeah, but you know what we never had was a New York City hot dog. And it was like one of those light bulb moments in a cartoon. I went back into the kitchen, dropped off the plates, then literally ran outside of the hot dog cart in front of the restaurant, bought a hot dog, ran back inside. Um, somehow convinced the chef to serve it in our fancy restaurant. And he cut it up into four perfect pieces. And we added a little swish of ketchup and mustard and a canel of sauerkraut and relish to each plate. Then, before their final savory course, which was a honey lavender glazed Muscovy duck that had been dry aged for two weeks, I brought out what we in New York call a dirty water dog. And I explained it. To make sure you don't go home with any culinary regrets, here's your New York City hot dog. And they freaked out. At that point in my career, I'd served thousands of plates of food and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of food, things like butter poached lobster and Ocetra caviar and Wagyu beef and you name it. And I'd never seen anyone react the way that they did to that hot dog. Athletes always go to the tapes and they've had a bad game to see what they could have done better. They don't often enough go to the tapes and they've had a good game to see what they did well to make sure they keep on doing that thing. That's how you put systems behind moments or ideas that you stumbled into organically. And so I went back to the tapes and that hot dog. What happens that could happen? What needed to happen so that it would start happening all the time? And it was three things. The first was being present. Being present is so overused these days, but for me, it just means caring so much about the person you're with that you stop caring about everything else you need to do. And it was essential in developing unreasonable hospitality. If I hadn't been present to that table, I never would have heard the throwaway line about the hot dog. Second, it was that I was taking what I did seriously, but not taking myself too seriously. I think so often in any customer service business, people run the risk of letting their self-imposed brand standards get in the way of them, giving the people around them the things that will actually bring them the most joy. A hot dog in a four-star restaurant does not make sense until you look at the way it made them feel. And third, it required the acknowledgement that if hospitality is about making people feel seen, the best way to do that is not to treat them like a commodity, but as a unique individual. In unreasonable hospitality, one size fits one. And I've said this so many times, I believe I could have given that table a really expensive bottle of champagne and a big thing of caviar, and it would not have had the same impact as the $2 hot dog. 
that whole experience, it changed my approach because up until then, I'd been so focused on excellence and all the little details that went into making a meal great that I hadn't realized something that I now consider to be so important, which is that the food, the service, the design, they're simply ingredients in the recipe of human connection. And that became my entire focus going forward from there. I love that story. And last year, I interviewed this gentleman named Dr. Nate Zinzer, and he's been teaching at West Point for 25 years, and he teaches the psychology of performance, but also confidence. And he came out with a book last year called The Confident Mind. And it turns out that he also coaches professional athletes, and he's coached Kirby Puckett and Eli Manning. And oh. one of the things that he teaches them- Just a couple of random athletes, huh? <laughs> And the story with Eli Manning is he, Eli lacked confidence and he came to Nate because he was at a certain point in his career and he wanted to take it to the next level. And one of the first things he went through with Eli was how he was examining the tapes after the games. And so he instructed Eli to throw away all the mistakes he made and only keep and watch the replays of when he was executing the throws and the plays and the way that he wanted them to occur. And so he said by focusing on, as you were saying, not the mistakes we're making, but the ideal plays and where we want the goal line to be going forward, you can shift your mind to be that place on a more regular basis. And within, I think it was 12 to 18 months of working with him, he won the Super Bowl. Wait, so, tell me, what's, the, what's his name and what's the name of the book? I want to write this down. Nate Zinzer, and it's called The Confident Mind. Thank you. I also asked you again, so anyone listening now can write it down too. 